Hundreds of people are starting to disappear from all your mainstream social media websites, from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter to YouTube to even Google, who is known to, well, blacklist certain websites by shoving them down the feed and making them impossible to see. Bottom line, if you support anything on the Republican right, then you are immediately removed. Now, a lot of you are already well aware that this is happening, but what I want to do in today's report is show you the latest victims. Not only that, but reveal to you who is likely next and who is behind it. And you might be surprised because it's not just big tech organizations. No, they have a lot of partners and friends pushing it and doing it for them behind the scenes. Now, before I get into the report, I just want to give a quick shout out to hidewithlisa.com. Again, if you don't have a VPN, I beg you to please get one. I use Virtual Shield because I know they throw everything away within 24 hours. Free ones do not do that. So get on a VPN to protect your safety over the internet. Check it out at hidewithlisa.com. All right, back to the report. So let's start first with the latest victims and disappearances on YouTube. Take a look at this article on Infowars.com. YouTube bans James Alsop and tons of other right-wingers in the latest censorship purge. Now the article goes on to state who was included in the purge, and that is James Alsop, Dare Radio, American Identity Movement, TRS Radio, Michael Hoffman, Way of the Road, and Brittany Salner. So just who is behind this latest purge on YouTube? Well, the Anti-Defamation League. Now, if you're not familiar with who they are, I'm gonna take you to their website, but here's what they say as far as their mission statement is concerned. Basically, to stop the persecution and defamation of Jews. Now, let me just pause right there because that statement alone sounds great on the surface because I agree with it. We shouldn't be persecuting and defaming Jews, but neither should we be persecuting and defaming Christians or persecuting and defaming white people or black people or yellow people or Muslims or Catholics or whatever your religion, race, or creed is, fill in the blank. They shouldn't be being defamed. Sounds great on the surface. The problem is the ADL ADL takes it to extremes. And now, just for being in opposition to the policies of Israel, being against the political government or whatever, they've now classified that as anti-Semitism. In fact, do you know the YouTubers that were listed on the list from the InfoWars report I just showed you just so happened to be some of the names found on the ADL's list of Uh, of people that should be removed from the internet. Take a look at this article on the ADL. Now this is an archived file, which means I'm not sure if the original is still up, but it says, despite YouTube policy update, anti-Semitic white supremacist channels remains. Now again, if you scroll through that list, they've got about 30 people listed on that list. And of those 30 people, I think four or five of them have been removed recently. And this is an article that was written by the ADL on, I believe, August 19th of 2019. Who is really behind it? Well, in that particular case, the ADL. Now, as far as the channels are concerned, I'm not very familiar with any of those channels that were listed on the ADL site. Uh, I don't know James Alsup, Dare Radio, American Identity, TRS, Michael Hoffman, and the others. I haven't watched them. I don't know. But what I can say is Jason, James Alsup, for example, was not given a reason why his channel was removed, nor did he have any strikes. You see, if you are spouting hate and, and you are saying uh, racist comments, you will get a strike on your channel. That I know because I have a YouTube channel and I wouldn't say any of that anyway. But if you're blaspheming and speaking negative against someone, you're going to get a strike. But James Alsup, I know, didn't have any strikes on his channels. So why was it removed? Well, good question. YouTube has yet to answer that. But my key here is the ADL obviously had something to do with it. Again, I'm not vouching for these channels. I don't know them and I'm not saying I support their content because I don't know who they are. I haven't watched them. Just making that very clear. But all I'm saying is it should have been right to at least give a reason why. 
right? Especially if there were no strikes on the channel. Not only that, it's not just the ADL. You see, the Southern Poverty Law Center has a hit out on YouTubers also. As you are already now well aware, InfoWars, who was targeted by the Southern Poverty Law Center, has been removed from YouTube. But you know who else the Southern Poverty Law Center calls a criminal? How about David Barton? Now, if you're not familiar with David Barton, he is simply an American historian who talks about Christianity being the foundations and principles of America. I've watched uh, his whole starter series and basically he's on the list because he called America a Christian nation. How is that in any way extremist views? Or how about Ron Paul and Ron Paul Institute? Anything linked to Re Ron Paul, they're calling also extremist content. You see, they label, they're a far left radical organization labeling those on the right. And Southern Poverty Law Center is the one calling many shots on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and other organizations. And there they are pulling the strings. But guess what? It's not just them. Let's go on over to Media Matters. Now, Media Matters is owned by David Barak. Uh, now, he wrote this. This is called Strategic Plan for Action. Now, in this Strategic Plan for Action, it boasts of creating massive grassroots truth squads. What is a truth squad? Well, they train hundreds of thousands of individuals on how to identify fake news and alt-right smears in social media networks and equip them with tools to fight the alt-right on their own. These people turn in channels and basically report things that aren't even worthy of reporting. So they, they're, it's like a Media Matters is paying hundreds of thousands of people, literally, to troll the internet and turn in people on Facebook and Twitter and Google and YouTube. That is what they're doing. So far, the ADL, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and Media Matters. But they're not the only ones doing that. You see, there's also news guard and uh, as you're going to see in a moment the truth project who are basically using algorithms and working with google and everyone to censor out certain sites let's take news guard for example if you don't know who news guard is they claim to restore trust and accountability they say and claim that they fight fake journalism they give green ratings for good mainstream media people and red readings for bad people like, you know, Lisa Haven and Next News Network and Mark Dice, you know, come on. Uh, in addition to that, they even tell advertisers who they should advertise with and who they shouldn't. This is NewsGuard, a fairly new organization being backed by millions of dollars by globalist groups that they're using on these social media sites as a third party. You see, if third parties are doing the weeding and algorithms, then it's out of the hands of Google out of the hands of YouTube, out of the hands of Facebook. It's not me. It's a third party that we told what to do. And this is what we're running into with NewsGuard. And not, it's not just NewsGuard. Now we have another one jumping in on the back one called the Truth Project. Now the Truth Project, here's their website here, but basically this company has weaponized algorithms to silence dissent. So here's what this company does. And I encourage you to go over and read the thing in its entirety. I've already read it, but basically they work in conjunction with mainstream media. There's over 60, 80 some odd media sources that they work with. Basically all those medias get a free pass, right? They go to the top. They don't even go through the algorithms. The algorithms is only for alternative media, only for people who are not part of the mainstream. So they get a bypass on this because they're funding and backing. And the Truth Project is funded by Google. It's funded by mainstream media. It's funded by a conglomerate of leftist organizations. And they're using this to target channels, basically to suppress truth. This is what happens every time truth is suppressed. You wanna know what's coming? Well, more suppression. And uh, let me show you this article on Infowars.com because I think it's important. Ron Paul, who are the real extremists? The article goes on to state, the fact that one of the shooters may have been motivated by anti-immigration views had led to calls for government surveillance of right-wing extremists. There are talks of developing computer programs to search social media and identify those whose extreme views supposedly make them likely to commit violence. There are also calls for legislation giving the government new power to prevent domestic terrorism. There are proposals targeting individuals based on their political beliefs, no matter how noxious they are. 
are a step towards criminalizing those beliefs. If the government gains new powers to treat those who abhorrent beliefs as potential criminals, it would not be long before those powers are used against anyone who challenges the welfare warfare status quo. The current use of right-wing extremism as a justification for expanding the surveillance state is the mirror image of the use of Islamo-fascism to justify the post-9-11 infringement on civil liberties. This is why it is distressing to see progressive and Muslim advocacy groups pushing for new federal authority to crack down on domestic terrorism, just as it was disappointing when so many conservatives who opposed Bill Clinton's attempt to expand the surveillance state endorsed the exact same proposal when they were included in the Patriot Act. Ron Paul is right, 100%. Anyhow, please share this with everyone you know. If you like what you heard, give it a thumbs up. And uh, thanks again for tuning into my channel. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.